There's a very interesting verse tucked in the middle of 1 Chronicles chapter 12 that I want to read to you today. It's talking about David when David became king and all the people that he put around him to ensure his success. And here's what 1 Chronicles 12.32 says. From the tribe of Issachar, there were 200 leaders of the tribe with their relatives. All these men understood the signs of the times and knew the best course for Israel to take. That is such wisdom that David put together a group of people that said, all I want you to do is look for the signs of the times, seek the Lord's wisdom so we will always know the best course to take. It's true today. We need to have uh, Christian authors, we need to have Christian leaders that are helping us do that, that are looking at the signs of the times to see where culture is so we as the church will know the best road to take to engage our culture. One of those men has written a book. His name is George Barna. This book is called Helping Millennials Thrive. I greatly encourage you to get this book and to read it. It's very interesting, full of insight. George Barna is a researcher and he has given us all the latest statistics on what is going on in America with regard to worldview, both a biblical worldview and a secular worldview. So what I'm going to do today is I'm just going to take you through what a biblical worldview is so that you can decide for yourself, do I have a biblical worldview? And then in the next video, we'll come back and look at America's response to the biblical worldview based on the stats by George Barna. So let's begin uh, by talking about a biblical worldview. There are seven parts of a biblical worldview. Number one is this a biblically orthodox understanding of God's nature and existence. So in other words, if you're going to have a biblical worldview, you have to understand that God exists, He has always existed and always will exist, and that He created the world. Now, you don't have to believe in a seven-day creation or seven-million-year creation. It's not about the details of creation theology. It's simply this. Do you believe that behind our world is a Creator God that helped put it into place and create it. And if you have that, then you have a biblical worldview. So that's step number one. You have to believe in creation. You have to believe God is Creator. You have to believe He exists and that He will exist forever. So that's number one. Number two, an acknowledgement of being a sinner in need of a Savior. The Bible is very clear that when Adam and Eve sinned, human beings were separated from God. Our sin, we have a sin nature, according to the Bible, by nature we are sinners. By nature we are evil, we are sinful, we are selfish. And that sin, that selfishness separated us from God. Not only did our sin separate us from God, but we don't have a way to earn our way back to God. We can't do anything about our sinful condition because it separated us from God, because we have no way to get back to God, we are in the need of a Savior. And so if you're going to have a biblical worldview, you have to understand, number one, there is sin. Number two, I am a sinner. Number three, my sin separated me from God. Number four, I can't get myself back into the presence of God on my own merits. And number five, therefore I need a Savior. That's a biblical worldview. Number three, Jesus is the only way to salvation. Jesus is the only way to salvation. Now here's where it begins to get real tricky because a lot of people in the world now say Jesus is a way to salvation, but He's not the only way to salvation. But let me be very clear with you what the Bible says. The Bible says that sin separated us from God and we need a Savior and Jesus is that Savior. And Jesus' death on the cross paid the penalty for our sins so that we can be reconnected to God our Savior. And the only way you can be reconnected to God our Savior is through the blood of Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life, John 14, 6. And no one comes to the Father except through Him. So if you're going to have a biblical worldview, you can't say, oh yeah, Jesus is, is a good man, and yeah, He was the Son of God, and yeah, He's a way to salvation, but there's a lot of ways to salvation. That's not a biblical worldview. Biblical worldview says Jesus is the way. Through the blood of Jesus, that's how we are reconnected to our Creator God, and we call that salvation. Number four, absolute moral truth exists, and God is the basis for all truth. Now, in the middle of a culture that does not agree that there is absolute moral truth, the Bible affirms 
There is absolute moral truth. And guess who is behind all moral truth? God is. God is the author of moral truth. So in other words, if you're going to have a biblical worldview, you have to believe there is such thing as absolute truth, and God is the writer of absolute truth. Which leads us to number five. The Bible is the written, inspired Word of God and is His message of truth for His people. And so not only do I have to believe that absolute truth exists and that God is the author of that truth, but that He gave us that truth through His precious Word of God, the Bible. That is a biblical worldview. Number six is that success is consistent obedience to God. Think about how the world defines success. Success is based on money or based on power or based on working yourself up the ladder or your relationships. A whole lot of different ways that the world defines success. God defines success. The Bible defines success as walking in obedience with the Lord. In other words, having an active walking relationship with God. And if you're going to have a biblical worldview, you have to believe that it is paramount for us to have a walking relationship with God based on our obedience to Him, and that is how we define success as Christians. And then finally, number seven, life's purpose is to know, love, and serve God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. In other words, how you find your purpose in life is not through self, it's through God. And you go and you find God, and when you find God, you find your life purpose. And so that's a biblical worldview. So I just want to review this for you. If I have a biblical worldview, this is what I believe. God exists and He created heaven and earth. I am a sinner and I sinned, and my sin separated me from God, and I'm in need of a Savior. Jesus Christ is that one and only Savior, that through the blood of Jesus, He cleansed me of all sin and brings me back into relationship with God. Absolute truth exists, and God is the author of that truth. That truth is revealed through the Word of God. Success is defined by the believer as consistent obedience to God through a walk with Him. And finally, my life purpose is found in walking with God and loving Him with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. That's a biblical worldview. So here's the question I have for you today. Do you have a biblical worldview? Here's what's interesting. According to Barna's research, 6% of people in America have a biblical worldview. 6%. Of millennials, the ages 20 to 40, 4% of Americans have a biblical worldview. And of the 18 to 25 year old crowd, only 2% of Americans have a biblical worldview. I want you to let that sink in for a minute. Every American, all 330 million of us, that used to be a Christian nation, 6% of Americans believe what I just told you is a biblical worldview. They buy into that, 6%. 40 and under, 4%. 25 and under, 2%. The vast majority of Americans believe something else, and that's what we're going to talk about in the future videos. Here's what's even more frightening. According to research in Barna, 41% of pastors in America do not have a biblical worldview. They're preaching something other than the basic worldview of Christianity. You think about it, we've got, goodness, 40-45% of Americans still go to church, and yet 6% have a biblical worldview. What does that tell you about most Christians sitting in the pew of our churches? They may be sitting in the pew, but they don't have a biblical worldview. So once again, I'm going to ask you a question. Do you have a biblical worldview? That's one of the most important questions you'll ever ask yourself. Are you a sinner in need of a Savior? Have you asked Jesus Christ to come into your heart and save you of your sins? Do you believe in absolute moral truth and are ready to walk it out in obedience to the Word of God? Are you ready to surrender your life to Jesus Christ and love Him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength? That is what I'm asking you today. If you don't, I'm going to ask you to repent and get on your knees and ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart and to repent of your wrong worldview, your wrong worldview, and to come over and begin to have a worldview based on the Bible, the Word of God, and Jesus Christ. Let's pray. 
Father, as we define biblical worldview, I just pray that uh, for those of us who don't have one, that we immediately are quickened by the Holy Spirit to understand that we have been wrong, that we have been walking outside of your desire for us, and that we will repent and we will come back to you, and that our worldview will no longer be clouded by secular America, but it will only be driven by our love and desire for a relationship with you. In Jesus' name. Thank you. God bless you. Have a great day.